And my message is entitled, God with Us. If you remember your invite cards on the other side of your invite card, that was the logo, God with Us. And that's what Christmas is all about, is when God came to us. We didn't have to come to him. We didn't have to earn it. God said, you know what? I am going to come down by you. God with us, Emmanuel. And so in our passage, in our Bible passage for Christmas this year, we will see the author, John, launch straight into the purpose of his writing to present Jesus as the son of the living God who came to save you and me. And the first 14 verses lay down the theme of the book. So if you have your Bibles with you, or if you have your phones with your Bible app, or however you read the Bible, we also have Bibles in front of you in the pew. It'll also be on the screen behind me as well. If you want to turn to John 1, let's turn to the book of John. John 1, verse 1. John 1, verse 1. And in honor and respect of our Lord Jesus, if we could stand in the reading of his word. Amen? Amen, amen. Let's hold up our Bibles. We haven't done this in a while. Let's hold up our Bibles. Our Bibles are full of what? Good stuff. Our Bibles are full of good stuff. Whatever you need, wherever you need it, however you need prayer, God has the answers. This is the number one way God will speak to you. He does it through visions and dreams and circumstances, but the number one way is through his word. Can I get an amen on that? All right, let's turn to the book of John, John 1. If you are there, say, uh-huh. All right, let's go. Amen. All right, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to, the, to, to testify concerning the light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. There is so much stuff in here. Uh, you could do a whole month messages on this. It's so much theological stuff packed into there, uh, but it's so good. Uh, verse 9. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. So John wasn't the light, but the light is coming to shine the light on the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him or through this light, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but, he did not, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, those of us who believe in his name and have him in our heart, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The world became, or the word, and this is the big one, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And that's why we celebrate Christmas. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and full of truth. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, you are the light. You are the way, the truth, and the life. You came from heaven to earth to show us the way. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you gave up your divinity to come, Lord, to spend your time with us. You did not have to. You could have said, you know what? We tried this, we tried this experiment of humans. Didn't work. We'll start over. We'll make it clean. Let's just start over. But no, you came, Lord God, because you loved us so much. You gave it all for us, not born in a kingdom's, in a, in a mansion, but you were born in the lowly of lowlies. Why? To show that you are the pure king of all. Show yourself this morning. Show yourself in a real way this morning. I just don't want to read, Lord, scriptures. I just don't want to read your word. I want to experience it this morning. So show yourself in a real way in the lives of your people today. And may we be open to your word. In your most holy and precious name, all of God's children say, Amen. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes, you may take a seat. 
John 21. John 21 says this. 21, 25 says this. Jesus did many other things as well. So we already know from John, he did a lot of things. But Jesus also did many other things. If every one of the things he did was written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. Which is so true. Someone in our, someone in our congregation said, isn't it interesting that, you know, the Bible talks about, you know, his birth, talks about when he was around age 12, and it talks about when his ministry began. But you really don't hear a lot about Jesus in the middle there. You know, when those teen years, you know, was he a rebel? You know, you, know, you just don't know. You know, did he, you know, did he say something to his parents and get a spanking? I don't know. I mean, what happened in those younger years? We don't know. But I think that is a reason why. Because here's the thing. If, like, again, if everything would have been written down, there would be no more room. No more room. God already knows how long it takes us to read. You know, so the thing is, is that if everything was written down, it would be volumes and volumes and volumes. And so there would never be enough room for it. John 20, 31 says, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah. That Jesus is, what is Messiah? The chosen one. He is the Savior. He isn't just a rabbi. He isn't just another Jew. He isn't just a great teacher. No, he is the chosen one. He is the son of the living God. He is the savior of the world. And that by believing, not just believing in your head, what that means there is really, if you really want to go technical, that is total surrender. Believing is not not just in your head. You know, Satan believes in Jesus, but you don't see Satan going to heaven. No, 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 no. It's not just believing, but it's total surrender. It is a believing that if he is the son, it is believing that he is savior. And that believing is so much ingrained that you are to surrender all of what you are to him and have a relationship with him. That is what believing is. Total surrender, giving everything you are to someone else. Why? So that you may have life in your name. Maybe you're here and you're tired. Maybe some of you are depressed. Maybe some of you are full of anxiety. Maybe some of you are full of panic. And you're like, man, I just wish I could live the life God wanted. I just wish I could live the life that God had for me. You can. By putting your trust and your total surrender in Jesus the Messiah, who will give you life in his name. Matter of fact, not only life, but the Bible also says life abundant, meaning a blessed life. Praise God. These verses we just read in the book of John reveal two truths that we're going to look at this morning. Two truths. First one, God comes to you. We didn't have to come to him. We didn't have to earn it. We didn't have to do so many things and earn it. No, no. He came to us. Even though we were sinners, we deserved hell. We were going far away and straying away. God still said, you know what? I am going to come to you. His presence is all that we need. And I want you to know that. His presence, there's, a, there's a, uh, a song. I almost was thinking of, of playing this song for you, but uh, my wife is going to sing a special here at the end, and so I didn't think I was going to have enough time. But um, there's a song that I'm probably going to be, uh, there's a song that I've been listening to, and I forgot who it's by, but it's, it's called Weapon. It's just called Weapon, and you can look that up. Um, Actually, if you look that up, I'm sure you're going to get a lot of other things except for that song if you look up Weapon. But the thing is, is it's an incredible, awesome song. Matter of fact, if you're part of our Monday night prayer, which is growing and growing, it's incredible. God is doing incredible things. Anyway, that's going to be the next song that we're going to be playing uh, when we start out our prayer. But what it talks about is, is, it talks about the strongest weapon that you have. 
the strongest weapon that we have to defeat the devil, the strongest weapon to defeat anxiety and depression and cancer and anything. What is that strongest presence or what is that strongest weapon? It's the presence of God in your life. The presence of God in your life can defeat anything you're going through. I said anything you're going through. It can defeat, uh, it's the answer to your salvation. His presence woos you to salvation. His presence is there to forgive you. His presence is there to love you. His presence is there to be with you when you've heard bad news and you're crying yourself to sleep. His presence is all you need. His presence is there when you find out you have stage four cancer. His presence is there when you get a bad report from the doctor. His presence is there when you hear something bad that happened to one of your kids. His presence is there when your mom and dad die. His presence is there when there is a death in your family. His presence is there and his presence is all you need. Amen. Amen. We did not go for him, but he came for us. By our sinful nature, we do not want, by our sinful nature, we don't want God's presence to be around us. But he did come. And he is called Emmanuel. He wants to be with you. He desires to be with you. Matter of fact, when you were a little child, when you, when you got, when you were a child and, and, and something happened, you, um, Someone did something to you at school or you weren't feeling good. What usually happened? You always call for mom and dad. That was you, to you when you were little, you, you, having your parents around was something really special. When you were hurting or in your pain, when you were in sick, you didn't want your parents to go to work. You wanted them to stay with you, to, to, to comfort you, to be with you. Maybe some of you even remember when you were little that you wouldn't even go to bed. Some of my kids were like that when, when they were little, that they wouldn't even go to bed until we, our presence, came into their room to tuck them in. And I believe that's not just something that just happened. I believe it's, it's in our heart. There's something in our heart that wants that to happen, that love, that intimacy. We want the presence of a parent. The same is, is with our Lord as an adult. Let the Lord be that parent to guide you and to comfort you with him. That is what Emmanuel is all about. To blame God for ignoring or forgetting us, at least that's how we feel, is a great injustice. Because that is a lie. And it's never the case. God has never left us. His, Bible, his word makes it very clear that he will never leave us nor forsake us. But what is the issue that a lot of times when we don't sense his presence is by us leaving him. It's by something in our end that has caused a rift into the presence that we had and that intimacy that we had. Whoa, I hope that never happens. What what a sad day that will be when we don't feel the presence of the living God. Joshua 1.5 says this, as I, God saying, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I heard this morning, usually in the mornings before I come here, I have a routine. I live on routine, but it's, uh, it's a routine that, that it kind of works before I come and I just kind of, in the morning, I want everything to just, I want to put my mode in with the Lord. So usually in the morning, before I even come, as I'm brushing my teeth, I'm listening. Uh, there's already a church uh, in Singapore uh, that I listen to quite often. Um, and I'm not going to get into that, but it's a, just a great spirit-filled church. Well, they already had Christmas, so wow, they're in the future. If you want to know what the future is, just call Singapore. They'll let you know how the future is. But the thing is, is that they have this phenomenal church. The pastor actually, his mentor was Pastor Cho, who is an Assembly God pastor in South Korea. Anyway, their church is phenomenal. It's growing. It's just spirit-filled and powerful. So usually on Sunday mornings before service, I'm listening to their service as I'm brushing my teeth to try to kind of just get that. I want to get that. I want to build that faith. I want to build that faith before I come. And then usually here in the mornings as I'm turning on, the, I'm usually the first one here in the morning and I'm turning on the lights and I'm turning on the heat. Can I get a thank you for turning on the heat? You're welcome. Yes. 
Yes, I'm stoking it all with that coal. It's hard work, but someone's got to do it. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, no, not with the new stuff. It, it goes pretty good. But the thing is, is that so I'm here doing that. And as I'm doing that, as I'm flipping on all the switches, now I have, now I have music going on. I have Christian music going on just to try to, I need that. Because in the mornings, it's hard to get up. And especially with some of my health issues, mornings are the worst for me. Mornings are totally the worst for me. And so I need that to build my faith. Come on, let's go, God, let's go. And then what I do usually before the worship team gets here is like on, on, like on every Monday night or on every Monday night, I have our prayer music going on as I'm kneeling here, praying in tongues just for the glory of the Lord to just fall in this place. And the thing is, is that and if you're in this room and you sense the spirit, it isn't by mistake. It's because not only it's because people throughout the week are praying diligently for this service. And so on Sunday mornings, I'm just putting icing or on Sunday mornings, I'm putting icing on the cake here and saying, God, you need to move. You need to move. If you don't move, this is a social club. If you don't move, this is a boys and girls club. If you don't move, this is the KC Hall. You need to move and show yourself real in this place. Healings, miracles, salvations being commonplace. Can I get an amen? amen. And so with that, with that, I know that my God is with me. And matter of fact, what I love about Joshua 1.5, all that to say, what I heard this morning from the message from Singapore is that when you think about it, it says it here, as I was with Moses, do you know that the God that you serve, the God that you are intimate with, the God that you pray to is the same God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. He is a generational God. He is with Abraham. He was with Isaac. He was with Jacob. He was with Moses. Just like he's with Bill and Renee and Nate and Tara. He is your God just as much as he was with the, at the beginning. When you think about it, the same God that said to Abraham all the promises and to Joseph in the prison is the same God that is in you now. Just think of that. Amen. Matter of fact, it's even more. You have it even more than they did. Because in them, they, God was, because, because today, because of Jesus, God is literally in you. Not just talking to you, not just with you, but he is in you. And he will never leave you nor forsake you. The truth is that we are the ones, because of our sinful nature, because of our distractions of life, because the ones, because the ones who have left him, Martha was distracted. If you know that story, Mary and Martha. Martha was distracted by all the preparations. We are consumed by all the activities of Christmas. We are anxious about the things of life. We did not seek him, but he came to us. Matter of fact, Luke 10, 42 says, only one thing is needed. Jesus said, Mary has chosen the presence of the Lord, and that is the only thing that's needed. John shows the movement of God toward us in this passage. He started with the creator God who is eternal. Jesus was right there from the beginning. You know, Jesus was there from the beginning. It wasn't like, wow, he was born. Wow, now he's with us. No, he, again, Jesus is God. He was always there from the beginning. Jesus was right there from the beginning as well. In fact, John went even further. John went even went beyond Genesis 1, and that's creation. John went further back. Before creation took place, Jesus was there with God from all of eternity. And then through all things, and, th and then through all things were created. And that includes you and me. John 1, 5 says this. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. John 1, 9 says, the true light that come, that gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. John 1, 10, a says, he was in the world. John 1, 11, a says, he came to that which was his own. And John 1, 14 says, the word, the word, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among you. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. Praise God. Paul describes it in a similar way in Philippians. Philippians 2, 6 and 8 says this, who being in the very nature of God did not consider equality with God something to be used uh, to his own advantage. Rather, Jesus made himself nothing 
by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient, obedient to death, even death on a cross. He became obedient all the, way to the, all the way to the cross. He didn't have to. He could have stopped it at any moment. Matter of fact, even at one point, he said, Jesus, take the cup from me. Because I really, really, this is going to be hard. It's going to be painful. It's going to be, but Lord, you know, you are my father, and it's your will and not my will. I mean, Jesus did it because he so loved the world. He even died a human death. And a most shameful one at that. The one who made this world came into this world. He made, became the man he created, and he died the human death in a most horrible manner. He came to where I am. Jesus said in Matthew 20, 28, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. 1 John 4.19 says this, we love because he first loved us. The only reason you can love, period, is because God first loved you. Why? Because God, in his word, said God is love. So you cannot love anyone else in the, because God first loved you, because God is love. Even since Adam and Eve fell and went into hiding, God has been reaching out to you. He wants to draw near to you. A relationship with you is at the heart of God. That is all that he wants. That is all that our Lord desires, is to have a relationship. Again, it's not in the head. It's not, oh, I know God. Oh, I love God. It's a relationship. It's total surrender. When you're in a true relationship, as in a marriage relationship, you surrender. You both, the husband and wife, both surrender. That's why it happens when you become one. When God says two shall become one, you are surrendering all for the one. You are surrendering your thoughts, your ways, your routines. You are surrendering it all so that you two become one. Now, is that easy? It is not. It is not easy for that to happen. It is a struggle. But the thing is, is that you, you fight for it because that's what God wanted. You surrender yourself for your spouse because so that you guys can work together for what God wanted. God wants a relationship. He just doesn't want to be a part-time lover. He just doesn't want to be someone you pray for before you eat. He just doesn't want to be an afterthought. He wants to have a relationship. And relationships are not just part-time. Oh, when I really need you, then we'll have this relationship. Oh, when I feel like it, then we'll be together. Oh, okay, now we're going to church. Let's put our relationship hat on. No. No, a relationship, just like you're, you would never think of doing that with your spouse. You know, on Monday, Wednesday, you know, uh, just, you know, I don't think you'd ever think to your spouse, you know what, the first thing in the morning, I will spend time with you. I will read to you, I will talk to you, but then the rest of the day is mine and I'm not gonna talk to you. You do your own thing and I'm gonna do mine. But every morning, we are gonna be so close and intimate together. Matter of fact, you know, and this is, you know, you're talking to your spouse. Matter of fact, matter of fact, even Sunday mornings might be a real great time for us to get together and talk. But you know what? Then when Monday comes, you're the, no. See, we would never think of doing that to our spouse. But yet, why do we do it about to the son of the living God? Why do we feel that we spend our time in the morning and then we're done? No, our relationship should be that you are talking to him throughout the day. Your relationship should be so much that when you aren't talking, you are hearing the promptings of the Lord. Here's the thing. How do I hear God? I don't hear God. Oh my goodness, I can't hear God. I wish I could hear God. I don't know what God wants from me. I don't know. I don't, I'm doing all I can do. I'm praying. I'm doing it. Well, here's the thing. You probably are doing some great things. You probably are reading and you're probably talking to God. But are you ever just making time for him to talk to you? Matter of fact, sometimes in our Monday night prayers, again, it's just powerful times. And if you're not coming, you need to come. You need to come. It's just incredible. God's been doing some powerful things here. Matter of fact, there are times where I just tell, I just tell the people, I say, stop praying. 
I want you to stop praying. I don't want you to talk. I don't want you to speak in tongues. I don't want you to do anything. All I want you to do is be quiet and listen. And it can be a little eerie. It can be a little, it can be a little scary if you're not used to it because then for around five minutes, it is dead silent in here. But the thing is, is that we need to, and the reason why is because we talk, we talk all the time to God about our these and our those and our wants and this and that, and that's great. We tell him how much we love him. We tell him how much we care for him. But, but we also need to just stop and hear from God because that's when the answers come. That is when the love comes. That is when he speaks to you. Again, would you ever go to your spouse or do you ever go to your kids and you just start talking to them all the time and it's, you know, you talk to your spouse and you say, okay, this, oh, I love you. I love you, honey. It's great. That's awesome. And this is what I want. This is what I want. I'd like to have this happen, this happen, this happen, this happen. All right, bye. See you later. We would never think of that. That would be so incredibly rude if you did that to your spouse. You would think it would be totally rude if your spouse came to you and said, oh, I love you and just went on and on and on and on and then about all the things that they want and they desire and all this and that and then they just say oh I feel better and then they leave no but why do we do it to God why do we just speak all and it might be good things but why do we speak all these things to God and then just all of a sudden say okay boom I'm done now I'm going to work or now I'm going to go do the rest when do you stop and listen to the creator of the universe to speak to you your relationship with God is a dialogue. It was never meant to be a monologue. Say that to the comedians at night. Those are monologues. But the relationship that we have with God should always be a two-way street. Maybe you're not, maybe you are reading the word. Maybe you're praying. Maybe you're worshiping. Maybe you're going to church. But you still don't know what God wants from you because you aren't taking the extended time to listen to God. Maybe that means on a, maybe that means in your quiet time, uh, you know, you, you know, you read the word and all that and that's great. But then you specifically for 10 to 15 minutes, just listen. It might be the scariest thing you ever, it might be the scariest thing you've ever done. You'll probably hear yourself talk. You'll probably, your mind will get busy thinking of all the things you had to do in the day. And that normally will happen at first. But the more you do it, the more that your heart will be open to receive. The thing is, is that you have to make, you have to get your flesh in that mode to say, I don't want to know what I'm doing the rest of the day. I want to listen from God. And that might take a while. You might, you know, it, you know, it takes a while for your voice to go down. It takes a while for all that stress to go down. But once you continue in that, in that mode of habit, then it will become natural Will you'll be able to hear the prompting of the Lord. You will hear what he wants for your marriage. He will hear, you know, you, you know, he'll hear, you know, here's the thing is that, and I'm not saying anything bad about doctors. I'm not saying anything bad about counselors, but too many times we run to them. We run to the psychiatrist. We run to the counselor. We run to the doctor first before ever listening to what God said. Some of you in here are spending thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars on things to try to do a fix when all when God is saying, just listen to me first. Let me lead you. I want to either divinely heal you or lead you to where you need to go. Let me lead you to where you need to go. God has the answers. And instead of us rushing to the world and their answers, why don't we just listen to what God says first? Listen to him. Otherwise, you're just wasting your money and you're going to be right in the same place as you were before. Matter of fact, that's why maybe you're maybe that's why you're in the where you're maybe that's why your marriage is where it is. Or maybe that's why your health is where it is, because you keep trying to do th it's insanity. You keep trying to do the same things over and over and over and over again. But you're getting the same results. Matter of fact, um, again, I heard this in my quiet time. Is I, I, and this is big for me, and I think I've said this before, but I need you to hear me. I think when we get into trouble, either with our health or with other things, I think we look, I think we look up Google more than we look up God. I think we look up, and maybe it's just me, but 
I think sometimes, you know, when you're not feeling good, you know, we, we use the G of Google before we use the G of God. Oh, I gotta look up my, I gotta look up my symptoms. I gotta look up this, I gotta look up that. I, I, gotta, I gotta look up of, of how I need to, to be a better mate, or I need to look this up, or here I get some good ideas, or, you know, chat, GTP, let's see what they have to say. We, 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 it's easier to look up Google than it is to look up God. And so maybe what we need to do is just look up God and let God lead you into whatever it is, because God will never leave you, he will never forsake you, he will always lead you down that right path. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. The desire was so great that God was willing to do whatever it takes to redeem you and restore your relationship, even if that means to sacrifice his own son. God proved his commitment to us at Christmas. Jesus made himself understandable so that we can understand him. Jesus moved into our life with us. He understands. He cares about you. He cares about you, and he cares about your health. His presence is all you need. I want to share with you a true story. As you'll see on the screen, a lovely couple. Some of you might know them, some of you might not. But who that lady is, is Johnny Eric Erickson Tata. Anyone know who she is? She's a pretty famous Christian artist and author. Anyway, when she was younger, a terrible car accident, or a terrible accident left her a quadriplegic. In spite of her physical limitations, she became an accomplished author and artist. Over 25 years ago, well now this, now probably it's over 30 now, but, but many years ago, uh, she married her husband, Ken, as you see on the screen. For her wedding, she had planned to come down the center aisle in her motorized wheelchair. Just before her grand entrance, she noticed two distressing problems. First, she had rolled over her beautiful gown and made a big grease spot and a tear in it. Then, the flowers that were in her lap had slipped and had lodged between her leg and the chair. She was filled with major disappointment. And then suddenly the doors at this moment of the auditorium opened and she saw her husband-to-be. Here was the man, her husband, who was committing his love and his love to her. Joni later said that once I saw Ken's face, all I could think of was Ken. Everything else, the people in the church, the flowers that were sitting a little askew on my lap, the fact now that my dress didn't fall right because I was sitting in a wheelchair, now I have grease marks on it, I have a rip on the, on the gown, all of it, all of that has compaled in comparison to seeing my husband face to face. You might have a lot of problems in this world, you might have a lot of problems in your marriage. You might have a lot of problems in your health. But when we see and we focus on Christ, nothing else matters. Let him be the one that takes care of you. That when all is going astray, when all the stresses seem like they're going hectic, keep your eyes on Jesus. You are the bride of Christ. See your husband high and lifted up. That no matter what's going on, you're going to worship God. You know what? Presence is your battle call. You know what? Praise. Let praise be your weapon. Let his presence be your weapon. Let his presence be all that you need, no matter what problems you face, no matter what the doctors say, no matter who says what, that Jesus' presence is all you need for the peace of your life. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Psalm 23, 4 says, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. A father may lose his job. A wife may become sick in bed and bedridden for days. A child may fall and, or a child may fail in their final exam at school. We don't like these things, but they do come. Even so, even so, with hurt and pain and death, Jesus is with you. 
We don't need to fight it. We don't need to fear it. And we don't need to run from the situation. The best thing to do, but also the hardest thing to do, is to rest in the Lord. The rest in the Lord, enjoy his presence in the valley. He's there. And he has been in the valley all the time. Matthew 28, 20b 20 says, and surely I am with you. I am with you in your pain, in your struggle, in your hurt, hurt always to the very end of age. Don't, I will always be with you. Every time when I'm overwhelmed or weighed down by problems, what I do for my battle cry is I go to worship. I want to enter into the presence of God through worship. I want to bring my senses back into the presence of God. This world and its problems will always want to get your stresses and anxieties off of Jesus into the world's issues. Keep focus on Jesus. That's where I can hear his voice. That's where I can see his loving arms. That's when I know that him seated in the throne, he is present in my darkness. Be a Mary and choose what is better. Prioritize the presence of God in your life. It is a choice that you and I will make and will never regret. The second one and the final point I have for you this morning is that God comes to you and his love is what you have. Jesus is the answer to what you need. Notice the words that John uses. We are dead in sin. And John says, in life, we, in him, we have life. We are in darkness. And John says, the light will shine even in your darkness. If you're in darkness today, let the Lord shine in your darkness. Let the Lord shine. We are sick. Jesus said the sick will need a doctor. But Jesus said that he came to heal you. Matter of fact, Isaiah says that he is the God that heals. In Peter, it says that by his stripes, you were healed. Not you will be, maybe. No, you already were healed. How? Because of the blood of the lamb. The blood of the lamb has not only saved you, but he also healed you. It is there for you. Get into the presence of God. And in his presence is not only salvation. In his presence, not only do the backsliders come home, but in his presence, cancer is healed. The blind to see and the deaf will hear again in the presence of the Lord. He came for you, not to demand from you, but to give to you. Jesus became a friend of sinners and failures. He showed compassion on the poor and fed the hungry. He touched the blind and loved the outcasts. He healed the sick and he raised the dead. He was fully aware of man's needs and he was more than eager to meet you at your deepest need. Matthew 6, 8 says, do not be like them for your father knows what you need before you even ask. Matthew 6, 31 says this, So do not worry. Do not be full of anxiety, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run all over these things, and your heavenly Father knows what you need. God is always, 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 I need to repeat this to myself, God is always for you. You don't always get this, especially when you're going through a tough time. The doctor's report came in, whatever the case. We view God with suspicion sometimes. We question his motives. Some, some of us, when we might even blame him. But the truth is, is that you need him. He is your savior. He is your help. He is your healer. Again, 1 Peter 2.24 says that he himself bore your sins. In his body on the cross. See, this shows right here, 1 Peter shows that the redemption of Jesus was twofold. It was for your sins, so that you might die to sins and live for righteousness, but also for your physical healing. Because by his wounds, you have been healed. He died for your salvation, and he died for your healing. Can I get an amen? Amen. Matter of fact, he even said in the book of Mark that if you even love me and you follow me, you are to go out and you are to lay hands on the sick and they maybe will recover. 
Maybe if you're a good person, they will, no, they shall recover. The Bible makes it clear, not only was, was the atonement for your salvation, but it was for healing. Matter of fact, even God said, is, even God said this, is it easier for me to forgive sins or to say to this man, get up and walk? Jesus is saying, I did both. Is it easier for, you to, is it easier for me to forgive your sins or for you to be healed? God's, what God is saying there is I did them both. One is not easier than the other because I came for both for you. And send by that same faith that saved you, let that same faith say, God, send your blood to heal me. Your blood is enough. And let the Lord speak to you through that in his most holy and precious name. We are the ones who are lost and don't realize it. Matter of fact, if uh, Kaylee or someone who's going to get Katie, if they can get Katie, that'd be great. We are the ones who are lost and don't realize it. We are the ones who are sick and not know it. God has our good in mind. He is for us and he is not against you. He has never been against you. It is not his fault. He did not do this to you. But we must run to him for his love and his comfort and his safety. John 34, 8 says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one. Blessed is the one here this morning at celebration who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his holy people. For those who fear Jesus will lack nothing. If you fear God, you will lack nothing. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord, those who pray out to the Lord, those who call out to the Lord will lack no good thing. Do you want something good? You want to be blessed? You seek the Lord. You seek the Lord. You pray to the Lord. You call out to God and the Lord will have a special thing for you. Romans 8.32 says, He who did not even spare his own son, but gave up his son for all of us, how will he not also, along with him, be graciously giving you all things? God's not going to give you some things. He's not going to give you some things if you do this and that. No, 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 no. Because of Jesus, he's giving you all. Matter of fact, do you know that out of all the promises of God, they are all yes? Out of every promise, to the, out of all the promises that God has in this word, each one of them is a yes because of Jesus Christ. And so if you're going through something, find a promise of God. It is a yes because that Jesus died on the cross for you. His promises are for you today. What more do you want? What more do you need for me to say? Let's celebrate the gratefulness that God has given to us this Christmas morning. And Katie, why don't you come up here and why don't you just share through music the presence of God that I feel is in this room. And then we will seek the Lord together. Yes. Thank you, God. Let's just take a second to thank him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, you are in this place. You are in this place. You are speaking to people in this room. Lord, you are speaking to those with anxiety and depression in this room, that you are there. You're comforting them. God knows what you're going through. God is with someone in here who's, whose health isn't the best. And God is saying, I know what you're going through. Don't fear. God is saying, don't fear. Amen. Don't fear. I have taken you this far. Why would I leave you? I am here to take care of you. I am here to touch you. I am here to love you. Those in here that, that are maybe having, uh, you know, marital issues, God is saying that I am, I am the husband that is here to take care of your marriage. I am the one who is here for you. I am the one who wants to take care of it. Whatever you're going through, don't put God second. Don't put God third. Please do not just like I have done. 
don't just Google your way to try to find the answers. Go to the rock that is higher than you. You will save so much more money. And you'll, you'll, you, when you do things God's way, you know you're always doing it right. But in this world, we feel like as soon as something happens, we need to right away go to a doctor. Right away, we need to go to the emergency room or to the urgent care without getting on our knees and just saying, God, what do you want? What is the going on here? I have been doing and struggling for this for a long, long, long time. And the routine that I'm doing isn't working. So Jesus, what is the answer? And when you say that, then I want you to just listen. And if you are baptized in the spirit, I encourage you. I very highly encourage you, if you're baptized in the Spirit, that when you are seeking answers, you spend time praying in tongues. And maybe that might be for an hour or two. Matter of fact, again, I just have been listening to a lot of things, and I, I heard this healing that I've been hearing healings that have happened by people who have been praying in tongues for an hour, two, three, four, one person prayed for 17 hours straight. 17 hours straight speaking in tongues. And God healed them of the struggle that they were going through. And as you pray in tongues, ask God to interpret that even in your mind so that you know you're praying the perfect will of the Father and what he has for you. If we could all stand with all heads down as we close. If I have any of my elders here to come forward for prayer. The Christmas story is a powerful one that brings each of us to a point of decision. And Jesus this morning offers each of you a free gift. What will you choose? What is the Holy Spirit speaking to you about this morning? And where do you need your healing today? John 14, 6 says that Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth and I am the life. I am the way. I am your way. I am the only truth you need. And I will provide your life. No one comes to the Father. No one goes to heaven except through the way of Jesus. So first of all, with all, with all of us standing and all heads down, if you need Jesus into your heart, if you need to ask Jesus into your heart for the first time and have a relationship with him, I ask if you're in this room, I don't care if you've been part of our church for a long time. I don't care if you're new. I don't care where you're at. But if you, for the first time, need to receive Christ into your heart, I want you to raise your hand. Raise your hand right where you're at. Is that anyone here this morning? Jesus is here in a mighty and an incredible and a huge way. My second is that maybe you have slipped away. Maybe you have slipped away. I'm not saying a huge major like, all right, now I'm boy, you know, I'm totally, uh, now I'm doing drugs. No, I'm not asking about that huge slip. I'm just saying maybe even a little slip. You know, maybe your compass isn't fully north to the Lord is where it should be. And you've listened a little bit to life's, you know, life's answers. Maybe you've kind of, maybe you're, you know, you've done like what I did and you kind of have kind of gone the world's way a little bit. Instead of going to Christ first, you're, you've gone to the other G first. You've gone to Google first. You've gone to the internet and you're, you're trying to figure everything out. You're trying to figure this out on your own, except for letting God do what he wants. Do you know God has it all planned out for you? And so maybe you slipped away a little bit, but you know what? You want to make things right with the Lord today. And you want to just surrender everything. Again, to believing in him is to surrender everything to him. Your thoughts, your dreams, your passions, your I'm surrendering it all. That is what a true relationship with him is. And so if it's you today that maybe you've slipped a little bit, but you want to come back to the loving arms of the Father today and run into your Father with all that's within you, raise your hand right now and let me pray with you. Is that you today that wants to run back into the arms of the Father and you've slipped a little away? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, we thank you and we praise you and we give it all to you today. And for the rest of us that are here today, James 5, 14 and 15 says, is anyone among us sick? Let them call on the elders that we have here at the front of the church to pray over them and anoint you with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer that's offered in faith 
What does that mean? By trusting in him, being fully persuaded that God has the power to heal you and to touch you will make the sick person well. We believe that here at this church. That when we place our hands on those that are sick, the Bible says they shall recover. And the Lord will raise them up. And if they have sinned, they will be forgiven. And 1 John 5, 14 says, This is the confidence that I have when I approach God. That if I ask anything according to what God want, God's will is, he will hear you. And if we know that he hears you, that whatever you ask, we know that what we, that what we have, we will have what we asked for. And so right now, with all heads down as we pray and as we close our service today, what we're going to do is we're, I'm going to pray an ending prayer. And then we're going to go into one last worship song and we're going to sing that worship song. And when that worship song is done, please, you are dismissed to go. But I really do ask a favor from you and that whatever talking that you want to do, and that's great and that's awesome. If you could, if you could do that in the foyer, have some coffee, talk all afternoon if you want. But the Lord is doing something right now in this room. God is speaking into couples' lives. He's speaking into marriages. He's speaking into people's lives right now. He's bringing people home. And I don't want anything to interrupt that. And so if you need to talk, please do so in the foyer. But let the sanctuary be a place of the Lord. We believe that this altar right here is on fire. We, 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 someone had that vision that this altar is on fire. And we believe that the Holy Spirit, his fire wants to meet you right here. Not only to burn away your sins, but also to ignite a passion and a fire in you to serve him. And so I'm going to pray. And after we're done, we call upon those that need prayer from anything from a cough to cancer. If you're struggling in any area, uh, whether it be physical or mental or spiritual healing come to our elders. I'm going to come up, up front here too. Um, if you want specific prayer, I would love to pray uh, either the baptism of the Holy Spirit or even physical healing on your life. And so let today be the day that you leave here changed. Remember, today is the day that God is Emmanuel, that he is with you today. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, I believe, Lord God, the best is yet to come. I believe, Lord, we are poised to do incredible things things in this community. I know that, Lord God, you want to do incredible things with your people. And I pray, Lord God, that we come, Lord, expecting, Lord, that you will use us, change us, and mold us, Lord, into who you have for us to be. We thank you for this Christmas season. We thank you that you came to be born for us, Emmanuel, living and breathing with us in your most holy and precious name. Amen. Amen. Let's spend some time in prayer. The altars, the altars are open.